welcome to Catalan News. It's day 11 of the December 21st Catalan election campaign and one more day the measures that the Spanish government has been taking against Catalan self-rule are almost dominating the debate. Madrid has taken new decisions today including closing down a body that promotes Catalonia abroad and restricting the powers of the Catalan tax agency. Here at Catalan News we'll get you what the candidacies had to say about the enforcement of Article 155 and we'll also learn about some good figures from notable Catalan multinational firms. It's less than a week to go before the elections. Some Catalans have already voted by mail, while other citizens abroad are working to make sure that no ballots get lost in any Spanish embassy and consulate, as it happened in the 2015 election. Meanwhile, parties continue to campaign, always with an eye on the numerous polls being published these days. Day 11 of the campaign saw a flood of polls. The reason? The law doesn't allow the media to publish predictions any closer to the election. The outcome of the ballot is still not clear, but the trends suggest that Esquerra will win with 30 to 35 seats. If the polls are right, Uriol Junqueras' party will win with a slight margin of seats over Ciutadans and Junts per Catalunya. It is unclear whether the pro-independence parties as a bloc will hold on to their majority. But what is certain is that the Unionists will fall short of the desired 68 seats in the chamber. A record-breaking turnout is expected, as well as the most fragmented parliament in history. Never before has the winner gained less than 40 seats. The candidacy has continued to vie for the attention of voters today, from Catalonia and also from Brussels. The Catalan president, Carlos Puigdemont, took part in an event via video from the Belgian capital. He made it clear that after the suspension of Catalan self-rule, a pro-independence victory would be a bombshell. La manera més clara de derrotar-lo és que hi hagi el mateix govern que el 155 ha volgut cessar de manera il·legal i il·lícita. Aquest és el missatge que s'entendrà millor i és el que ajudarà no només a un, sinó a tots a sortir de la presó i a tornar cap a casa. Meanwhile, Spanish President Mariano Rajoy, also from the EU capital, remarked on the harsh measures taken by his government. Era absurdo no tomar esa decisión, pero ante una situación excepcional, pues eh, se tomó una medida excepcional y las medidas excepcionales no deben prolongarse en exceso en el tiempo. Also concerning Article 155, the Coup Party candidates said that their election goal is to bring an end to enforcement of the infamous clause. They also hope the election will bring the Catalan Republic closer. Esquerra's Marta Rovira expressed a similar view, but avoided any deadlines for independence. Meanwhile, the socialist leader branded his own proposal of reprieving any pro-independence leaders who might potentially be convicted as premature. The political action has taken place today not only in Catalonia and in Brussels, but also in Madrid. The Spanish government has made clear that it is effectively governing Catalonia, leaving no room for the undismissed officials to have a say. The Spanish cabinet met today and took several decisions, such as preventing the Catalan tax office to continue collecting some taxes to be later sent to the Spanish administration. In a press conference after Spain's cabinet meeting, the spokesman Inigo Mendes de Vigo also announced other measures, such as officially liquidating Diplocat, the Public Diplomacy Council of Catalonia, in charge of promoting the country abroad. The body activities were on halt since the declaration of independence. The Spanish government also banned the Catalan administration to appeal against the recent removal of the Sichena works of art from the Museum of Lleida, later sent to another region in Spain. La autoliquidación que pretendía de entidades públicas respecto a cotizaciones sociales y respecto a hacienda pública no existe en ninguna otra comunidad autónoma española. Los propios responsables políticos hablaban de que esto formaba parte de la creación de estructuras de Estado. Por tanto, el acuerdo de gobierno hoy ha sido disolver. Article 155 and the latest Spanish judiciary measures against Catalan pro-independence leaders are the source of much talk, not only in the political arena. Indeed, 60 days into the imprisonment of some pro-independence leaders, some public workers have protested against it. In the northern Catalan town of Girona, some workers held a demonstration outside the Catalan government office. Another demonstration has been held in Barcelona with workers of different Catalan executive departments, such as the Foreign Affairs Ministry. In fact, the deposed Foreign Affairs Minister, Raúl Romero, attended the protest in a reunion with his employees. 
Now we continue our series of visits to events of the parties expected to get seats in the next Catalan Parliament. Today we focus on the socialists who are fighting against Ciutadans and the People's Party for the unionist vote. We've recently been to one of their gatherings in Ruby in the Valles area, a highly industrialized part of the country not very far from Barcelona. In the past this was a very favorable territory for them, but now things are changing. Things are looking up for the Catalan Socialist Party, the PCC, this upcoming election. They're set to get 20 to 25 seats in the parliament, a far cry from 2015's dismal results when they came away with their lowest ever 16 seats. But since then, they've been in a steady upwards climb. The party follows an ideology of unionism and social democracy. And this year, it's put its leader, Mikel Iceta, in the spotlight, as its motto shows. And voters indeed see the party leader as the key. And Mikel Iceta is the best candidate for these elections. Iceta would be a great president for Catalonia, and the, it's the solution to this uh, problem that we're having here. Iceta has become the face of the party for a reason. He's set to stop the non-stop decline of the socialists since the 90s. And his supporters view him as an experienced politician with an affable approach that stood for compromise. We no want a country guided by the division and the hate, but by the fraternity and the joy. I ask that we take this country from a overdose of bad milk. The party has positioned itself as an advocate for reconciliation. Still, the PSC is staunchly unionist, albeit the only one to be left-leaning, having voted for Article 155. It's found itself with some strange bedfellows, the People's Party and Ciudadans, and the latter is also its greatest adversary. We're here in Rubí, a town which has had a socialist mayor for the past 14 years. In fact, Rubí is an example of a town in Catalonia where the socialists have been able to garner many votes in the past without much opposition. However, this election cycle, things may have changed as younger voters seem to be migrating over to Ciudadans as some of them see the Catalan Socialist Party as outdated. In fact, one of the key elements that the Socialist Party will have to do this election cycle is to keep existing votes. The Catalan Socialist Party is eager to move on from the pro- and anti-independence narrative that's been dominating the election cycle. Whether voters feel the same is yet to be seen. Moving on to business now, and it's good news for two Catalan-based companies as 2017 continues to be a profitable year, despite recent political tensions between Spain and Catalonia. In fact, sales for the car manufacturer, Seat, increased by nearly 20% in November when compared with the same time last year, continuing the positive trend seen throughout October. Not only this, but in 2018, the company will expand its workforce on the production line in order to meet growing demand. Another big Catalan company, Mango, also announced today that it will make 100 million euros with the sale of one of its facilities to a British investment firm. We talk about nature now, because preserving the environment and the natural habitats of endangered species is a global issue. But even though the world's governments can sign all the agreements they please pledging to cut down on emissions, sometimes looking after the world around us is best dealt with on a local level and getting the next generations involved, as we found out today in the Ebro River Delta. How do you help future generations care about the conservation of endangered species? Get them involved in conservation projects. This is what one primary school in the Delta de Lebra region of southern Catalonia believes. Today, Amposta Soriano Montagut School in the Tarragona region took some of its pupils to help out in a nearby national park by reintroducing thousands of endangered fish back into the wild. A total of 2,000 samaruks, commonly known as the Valencian tooth carp, and 1,500 covitis paludicas, a type of ray-finned fish, were let loose into the river with a little assistance from park officials. Both the species are threatened by habitat loss. But this hands-on experience is aimed at teaching the students to understand the importance of protecting threatened species and their environment. No es lo mateix viure veure un samaruc o un llopet en un dibuixet en l'ordinador o en la pantalla digital a veure la qui directament i gairebé tocar-la com han pogut fer ara fa un moment, no? Per nosaltres això és molt important. Pues és una espècie que en queden poques eh no sé, no només aquí, sinó al reu del món i vos que tenim que ajudar a que sobrevisquen. The released specimens will be tracked from the Parks Ecological Center where they were originally bred. In recent years, 
the center has managed to breed and maintain between 7,000 and 10,000 specimens of various species of freshwater fish. This year, the breeding of the Covitis paludica has been remarkably satisfactory. Today was a sad day for Catalan cinema, as the road to the Oscars for Estío 1993, or Summer 1993, came to an end. Directed by the young Barcelona-born filmmaker Carla Simón, Estío 1993 is the delicate tale of a girl who discovers death and is forced to negotiate with feelings of grief and sorrow. It was selected by the Spanish Cinema Academy to represent Spain in the Best Foreign Language Film category at the 2018 Academy Awards. It was the second time that a Catalan language movie was in the race to go to the Oscars. However, Estío 1993 was left out of the nine films shortlift pre-selected by the Oscars Academy. Yet, it can still compete in the Goyas, Spain's main film awards, with eight nominations. In the running for the crown of best film, there's another film by a Catalan director, Isabel Cochet, The Bookshop. That's all for today's show. We leave you now with some images of an international contest for orchestra conductors held in the idyllic Catalan town of Cadaqués in a Costa Brava. 300 participants from all around the world competed for a very big prize, being a conductor of 40 different orchestras for three consecutive years. We hope you enjoy it and see you on Monday.